I'm Eric Lanigan with Lanigan and Lanigan Attorneys in Winter Park, Florida. I want to talk for a minute about the appellate process. Most people, you know, when you watch courtroom drama on TV, it's always at, at the trial level. The witnesses are on the witness stand, the jury's there. Um, who wants to watch a TV show about somebody making a legal argument in front of a panel of uh, uh, older judges? Um, and that's what an appeal is. An appeal is essentially nothing more than, I think this trial judge made a mistake. Remember, trial judges are just lawyers who decided they'd like to be a judge. Sometimes they were good lawyers, sometimes they, they're not good lawyers. Sometimes they're experienced lawyers, sometimes they're lawyers who have almost no experience. So there's nothing infallible about a judge, and most judges will candidly tell you that that they're just another lawyer trying to do his job. Um, so an appeal is when you have a situation where you think the judge has ruled incorrectly. If you go to the law library, there are literally thousands of books of cases, and every one of those is an appeal. So there's plenty of cases being appealed. There's plenty of situations where somebody believes fervently that the judge has made a mistake. Um, and when he has, it should be appealed. One of the problems with appeals is they're expensive. As most things in law are today, there's nothing cheap about doing an appeal, especially if you are not the lawyer who handled the case at the trial level. Because not only are you going to do all the research and prepare the briefs, but you've got to go back and study the case to determine what happened leading up to the appeal. So it's an expensive proposition. What kinds of cases are appealed? All kinds of cases are appealed. There are different types of appeals. There used to be what we, what we called uh, interlocutory appeals. And that was essentially any time a judge made a ruling that you didn't like, you, you could file an appeal. Um, if it was not the end of the case, it was an appeal along the way. For instance, let's say uh, an attorney filed a request to get certain documents from the other side, and they objected and the judge ruled, no, you're not entitled to those documents, and you, and you think that the judge is wrong, that you are. That would be an appeal, but it's not the end of the case. It's just an appeal of one of the issues along the way. And in the old days, you would file what we called an interlocutory appeal and get those things decided. Well, the courts were flooded and flooded and flooded with interlocutory appeals. And many years ago, back when I was a kid, they changed a lot of the appellate rules and they kind of did away with interlocutory appeals. They created appeals from final orders that's like a final judgment or some order that at least as to some party ends the case. So that's a final order. And then there are non-final orders, which that one I was just talking about a moment ago about the uh, documents issue would be a type of non-final order. And they limited the types of non-final orders that you could appeal. It doesn't mean that for instance, in the example I gave, well, I lost, there's just nothing I can do about it, but I may have to wait until the case is completely over and appeal it. And some, some, one school of thought would say, well, that's really not fair because it's going to affect the outcome of the case. I think that the people who write the rules and who wrote those rules were working under the general premise that you know, that seems like a big deal at the moment, but in the end, it probably isn't going to matter and it's not going to get appealed anyway. So you've got final orders and non-final orders are the types of appeals. Um, sometimes I'm asked, you know, well, what are the percentage of appeals where the judge, the lower court judge, is sustained or overruled? Um, I, I often answer, I don't know, and it doesn't matter. Because every case is completely different. You know, there, there are cases that are appealed, and you read the briefs, and you just go, this is garbage. Whoever wrote this should be embarrassed, because there, there's no legal basis for what they're doing at all. And I can only imagine how many appellate judges just um, 
can hardly stay awake reading briefs that are, make no sense and they make arguments that make no sense. So whether, what are your odds of winning? You, you can't look at any success or failure rate overall in the courts to, to determine whether or not your issue is a solid issue for appeal. Uh, what you've got to do is you've got to get to a dependable attorney who's going to give you a straight answer and not only is he going to give you his opinion as to what he thinks your chances are, he is going to tell you specifically why he holds that opinion. They should be able to take you to particular cases and say, all right, the judge did A, here are cases the same as or similar to, to yours where the courts are ruling that you can't do that or that that's wrong. And they ought to be able to take you to those cases and, and have an explanation for you as to how they've derived their opinion. And if they can't, either don't appeal or go somewhere else. Because I think that's the fundamental thing that everybody needs to, to know is what is my issue and what are the strengths and weaknesses of that issue in my case? What happened in, to your next door neighbor or the guy down the street or some case you read about in the newspaper means absolutely nothing. Because I will guarantee you there are things that can be fundamentally different when someone says, oh, I had a case like, just like that. Well, no, they didn't. I guarantee you there was always something that was different. So you need to sit down with somebody and you need to go through the process. And you're probably going to spend a couple of thousand dollars going through that process to find out whether you have a legitimate appeal or not. And I think it's money well spent. An appeal can easily cost you $15,000 plus and it's probably going to take a minimum of six months to get it decided. So it's a lot of money, it's a lot of time. And if you spend a few dollars up front to get a very serious analysis of whether or not you have what we lawyers would call an appealable issue, is money well spent. So if you're looking at the possibility of an appeal, uh, approach it seriously. Don't just take the, the, the sort of self-righteous indignation of an attorney who says, oh, the, the, the judge is... Uh, uh, how do you say it politely, um, not ruled for you very favorably and maybe has taken a harsh approach towards you and we all know there are other ways that we could say that but we won't right now. So don't get caught up in the emotion, uh, get a thorough intellectual objective analysis of the legal issue that you'll be appealing. Again, I'm Eric Lanigan with Lanigan and Lanigan Attorneys in Winter Park, Florida.